As Europe was battered by torrential rains and flooding this summer, parts of Germany experienced a month's worth of rain in a single day. This was Germany's biggest natural disaster in more than 50 years. Nearly 200 people died, most in the Ahr Valley and its surrounds. But three months on, they're slowly recovering, and on the steep hills on the valley sides, a most peculiar harvest is taking place. Volunteers have come from as far afield as the Netherlands to help this vineyard get in the grapes. I'm kind of emotional. Yesterday we meet a couple of winemakers, and you can see in their eyes that they have a lot of stress. You worry there's going to be more of this? Maybe. You know, maybe of five years, we really have a new one. This, I don't know. Is, this is the world we live in now? Exactly, exactly, yeah. A grassroots organization known as the Helper Shuttle has brought in volunteers from across Germany. Ordinary people still rallying in support of flood victims. Their continued presence showing just how deep was the national trauma brought on by these floods. This is three months later. The spirit has not faded. Well, the numbers uh, kind, kind of fade a bit, um, but the spirit is still there. And that's also the magic of this place. You can arrive here literally naked. Uh, we have a jewel provided. We, we have clothing, we have uh, safety stuff, we have all the tools, machines what you need. When you watch news and see people, things like this happening anywhere else in, in the, on the world, it's all gosh, yeah. But when you have it close to your own home, when you see houses like the houses uh, you are living in, when you see people uh, who are um, suffering, the impact is just um, immense. If now somebody is saying uh, climate change isn't existent, hmm, come on, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is climate change. The night the floods came, Simona Cruz was at work in her winery. They went to the roofs. So there were people on these roofs? Yeah, there were people on these roofs, and the youngest, uh, they stayed for the whole night, for more than eight or nine hours, and the youngest was two weeks old. As the floodwaters raced in, destroying hundreds of thousands of euros worth of equipment, Simona took photographs. This one, uh, when I see the pictures, it's really hard. Today, they hang in the winery as a reminder of what they have been through. We were crying because of all the helpers they came here and helped with everything, really everything. Seconds later, we were running outside because the doors here, yeah. They were closed and they broke. This was the time where I was really scared and we just ran out. My boyfriend, he was in front of me and when I followed him, the stairs were taken by the flood. So he rescued me out of the water, so yeah. You may wonder how you can be relatively safe one moment in deadly danger just five minutes later, but these were not slowly rising floodwaters. This was a tsunami of water that ripped down this valley. And to show you how powerful, these are the two ends of an ancient stone road bridge that spanned the River Ah. It was simply swept away. Just metres from the river lie the historic walls of Arweiler. Whereas much of the city still looks relatively untouched, some streets were ripped apart by the cascading floodwater. They were killed in the church. Killed in the church. How many people died in 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 they say itself? 170, but we're not thinking about that. We think it's much more. Linda and Jörg Kleber have run a restaurant here for four years. The floods destroyed the business that they had put their lives into. We asked the guys over there, "What's happened with them? You have no doors. You have no windows. The door was crashed." And, and inside, everything, everything destroyed. Everything. 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 There was nothing. They were busy serving diners as floodwaters approached. They say a fireman told them and their customers to save their cars. No one knew just how serious it really was, what was about to overtake their town and their lives. Then my hand is ringing, my friend saying, please come, you have water everywhere. I can see it. I can see it from over there. There's water. I go in the kitchen and I say, yeah, Something is wrong. We have to go. Because people who didn't leave, people in the church, people in the car park, they weren't so lucky. Yes, they died in so many places here. Because in the parking room, the people 
the, the firemen say, save the cars. So the people go in and want to save their cars, but they never came out. They never came out? They died in the parking. So it's... Uh, More than 20 people in this parking area. When Germany went to the polls last month, the centre-left SPD narrowly beat the CDU, the party of Angela Merkel. But in a strong third place was the Green Party, making them the kingmakers in ongoing coalition talks. But despite everything that has happened in just the last few months, is Germany ready to adopt radical green policies? All the way along this river? Yes. It's the same as this? Yes, I think so. Well, what has the impact of the flooding in the Ahr Valley and elsewhere had on that debate here in Germany? We have here now the first climate refugees. And the people see only the gas oil price. And they, they have fear that uh, they are not longer um, that are not longer affordable for them to drive a car. And this fear is much bigger than the fear for a further flood. So what is it going to take to convince them that this is the new reality? It is. And I think we have to uh, admit that climate change has arrived here in Germany. Otherwise, uh, our children will have no future here. In one of the great ironies of this summer, empty homes in the town of Kuchum have been used to house those flooded out of Ahrweiler, perhaps some of Europe's first climate refugees. But the reason these homes were empty is that Kuchum is about to be eaten up by a giant open-cast coal mine an ugly scar on the landscape that will continue to expand and produce coal until the year 2038. When you shut down nuclear power without having the renewables ready to replace it, this is what you end up with. Millions of tons of fossil fuels being gouged from the surface of the earth just to keep Germany's lights on. Whatever climate promises this country may make, it is expected that this monstrous hole will continue to expand for at least another 15 years. This is an 11th century village. Yeah. Wow. But we're going to destroy it for coal we burn for seconds. Yeah, yeah. David can trace his family in Kukum back to the 1700s. He's given up his job to work as a full-time campaigner to save his childhood home. What is the impact of the flooding in the Ahr Valley and elsewhere had? on that debate here in Germany. It make whole Germany talk about climate crisis and that it's real and that it's here. But it was the same like everything. Everyone was talking about it, but they didn't change anything. Because coal is still running, still driving cars without a limit. No one wants change, but everyone is talking now about that we need it. I think the flood was one of the focal point in this year which made parties in public say we want to stay in Paris goals but what we are missing is that they are doing it. Germany still needs coal, it still needs the natural gas that gets piped through a hugely controversial pipeline from Russia. Homes must stay heated and the lights stay on and yet Germany like every European country must commit to doing its part to get the continent to net zero. Angela Merkel, in 16 years, never really squared this circle. But the new government, whoever leads it, is going to have to. The events of the summer of 2021 left no one in any doubt about that. <laughs>